Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test. We've had some technical difficulty, but today we're talking about uh, route planning and navigation. And yes, those are two different things uh, to help you to get to your destination safely. Today we're going to give you step-by-step -step instructions. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. And... Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about route planning and navigation. And yes, we've had some technical difficulty. OBS would not hook up to the YouTube server for whatever reason. So, you know, in a mad frantic, running around trying to get everything working. So it seems that we're alive now. And Corey's here, Bricks for Wheels. He's in Manitoba there. And no, I really did not <laughs> want to say that we were experiencing technical difficulty. And a uh, very pleasant surprise, uh, had a super chat from ADCO there for $5. And thank you so much for that, ADCO. Any questions you have, we'll certainly answer that for you. If you're just tuning into the live stream here, be sure to let us know where you're tuning in from in the world and what class of license you're going for. And Hall Phase is here, EB is here, Marty's here, and Octo is here. Awesome, lots of people here. Uh, Hall Phase, this is the last... E stream. <laughs> Gene is here from Gene Washington is here. Awesome. Lots of people here. This is really great. So we're getting going here. Main camera. There we go. Okay. So I uh, had a couple of videos up this week. Had a video on how to drive a larger yes SUV, which was a request from Iceberg Slim, and I would like to thank him for that request. Uh, because it's kind of like when you're in classroom and you're teaching and somebody asks you a question and then five other people in the classroom had the same question and that's what happened with the SUV video It was well very well received and uh, lots of people needed that video to feel comfortable with driving a larger vehicle and SUV and those types of things so it was really well received the motorcycle video I put up this week not so much but if you haven't seen the motorcycle video uh, definitely have a look at that motorcycle video because it kind of caught me uh, unawares when the motorcycle driver made a right hand turn in front of me and I was like mm, he didn't signal but in fact he did signal so have a look at that it's a very short video it's only a minute ten so you, you know while you're drinking your coffee or something in the morning here uh, so there was a motorcycle video this week hall phase uh, Jeans from Chicago Annie is from Dubai hello from Dubai uh, AP managers here Martin's from Africa. Excellent. Whereabouts in Africa are you? Uh, EB, G for Canada. Awesome. That's really great. Honey, I have my road test on the 25th of June here in southwestern Ontario. I'm binge watching your videos. Thank you so much. Honey, Miel. Honey, honey. <laughs> That's clever. Okay. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay. So without further ado, we're going to get over uh, and just today's topic for navigation and route planning. Uh, we have one of the smart drivers here, probably be here in a moment, uh, from Milwaukee, and he is becoming a transit bus driver and asked me this morning about some tips and techniques because he was had some anxiety about learning the routes. Uh, there you go. Uh, there's the video. Corey put that up for you. Thank you, Corey. And uh, yes, AP manager, kids don't know how to deal with it. It's not that they don't know how to deal with larger vehicles. It's just that they don't have the experience. And when uh oh ap manager your driving instructor in ontario that's really awesome whereabouts uh which city in in ontario yeah the thing about is it's not that they don't know it's simply that they don't have any experience and one of the upcoming videos here was i had uh one of the smart drivers ask me why it's more difficult for cdl drivers to learn air brakes and it's not just air brakes but it comes back to this question here of new drivers driving larger vehicles and when i grew up uh when i was driving on the farm uh before i even got to a license before i got to driving a vehicle i had driven tractors i had driven old farm trucks and motorcycles motorbikes those types of things so i had a lot of experience driving different vehicles before i actually came to driving uh, uh a car on a roadway so this is one of the things that that the kids today, new drivers today, young drivers today, teenage drivers today, don't have. 
they don't have that farm experience of driving new vehicles. When most of these new drivers who are 16, 17, 18 years old get into a vehicle, this is the first time they've ever been in a vehicle. They've never driven before for, most, for the most part. They never drove the lawn tractor at home and those types of things. So when they go to driving school, they're sitting in a little Toyota Corolla or a Ford Fiat or a, a Toyota Prius or something like that. It's a very small vehicle. So their parents have an SUV, a Pilot, or a Suburban, a Chevy Suburban, which is enormous, or some other type of uh, larger vehicle, and then they, they go from this little car and they got to drive this thing. Well, they don't have any instruction. And the other problem is, is that a lot of people, th you know, they're not professional instructors. They don't know how to teach somebody how to drive a bigger vehicle. So, so it was really good that I was asked to make that video. And I realized afterwards that it was important, you know, for to teach other people how to drive those vehicles. And it's the same thing when I teach CDL, uh, teach commercial driving, and I teach tractor trailer. You realize that the student doesn't know how to back up using the mirrors, or doesn't know where the vehicle is in space and place. So you spend half a day or one lesson with the student in the parking lot doing slow speed maneuvers. You just simply get them to back around corners, uh, back up to the trailer. Uh, that's another good exercise if, 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 you're, if you're a new driver and you're trying to figure out where your vehicle is in space and place, try and back it up to the trailer, to hook onto the trailer because you have to be exact and, and you learn where your vehicle is in space and place. So that's another really good exercise. So, uh, AP manager, that's awesome. Thank you so much, I'm really glad that, you, that the videos are able to help your students and I appreciate you, uh, your compliment there. That's really great. Uh, hall phase, I like the video with Jen and how she learned how to still drive. And yeah, that was uh, hall phase. I really like that. That was, that was a very inspiring video to do. And it was, it was a great trip for my kids and I down to uh, Washington State. All right, snowmobile or go-kart for Marty there. Uh, Okay, uh, Cody, hi there, awesome to see you. Okay, uh, AP, I'll hold that question and I'll come back to that and I'll answer that. I just wanna get over to the PowerPoint presentation and get that going and I'll do that and then I'll come back and I'll answer your question, all right? Okay, here we go. Okay, transition, there we are. Route planning and navigation and this is a picture of me uh, as some of you may or may not know in 2002 when I still had hair <laughs> and I was looking very dapper with my beard that I had for about eight years. Uh, when I was driving for Greyhound in Australia. And for those of you new to the Smart Drive Test channel, I am Rick August. I am uh, a licensed driving instructor and I have been a driving instructor for more than 20 years now, since 1997. Most of my experience is as a licensed commercial driving instructor. So I taught truck and bus uh, with an expertise in air brakes and I wrote uh, Air Brakes Explained Simply, which you can pick up for about 13 bucks uh, over at the Smart Drive Test website. It's right there on the front page. Have a look for that if you're going for your air brakes or CDL. Uh, really good information. I spent a lot of time trying to simplify the information, especially terms like spring brakes, which tend to really confuse students. Uh, I was a truck driver and a bus driver through most of the 1990s. Uh, I graduated in 2006 from the University of Melbourne with a doctorate in legal history, which is the study of policing, courts, and prisons. And uh, my expertise, oddly enough, is, is in uh, po uh, policing as it relates to traffic and uh, while I was going to university I was a bus driver for both Greyhound and one of the regional bus lines there in Australia. So this week I got these two videos up, uh, how to drive an SUV, a larger SUV and Bannister Honda provided a Honda Pilot, a 2017 Honda Pilot which is actually an eight seater vehicle. Uh, beautiful car to drive, absolutely beautiful car to drive. And, and for those of you who've been around the channel for a while, you know that I'm somewhat biased to Honda, uh, the buggy which I drive, my 1998 Honda CRV, uh, just turned over 330,000 kilometers, which is about 210,000 miles. And uh, also uh, this video here, hand signals on motorcycles, just quick review on hand signals. And if you are driving, uh, you see a motorcycle driver, they may be using hand signals. And that's, that w was what inspired this video. All right, uh, definitions of route planning and navigation. And as I said, I have a transit bus driver who's learning the routes uh, in Milwaukee and going to be doing that. Two things that you need to know about route planning and navigation. Route planning is what you do before you go on the trip. It is determining your best route. And there's a mistake there. That should be an R. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we got an R, your best route breaks and fuel stops before the trip. It's also figuring out where your landmarks are. And I can get rid of, I can, increase some of this real estate here for you, my apologies. There we go, uh, we'll just make that a bit bigger. 
I mean shift plus, no, control Z. Uh, sorry, just bear with me here one sec. There it is, okay. And navigation is the execution of that route plan on your journey. Uh, also, route planning, the other thing that should be in here is also determining the landmarks. You wanna determine your landmarks before you get out, which is going to make you e make it easier for you. And with the advent of Google Maps, you know, it's been around for a while now, but with Street View, you can actually determine your landmarks. So for example, you need to turn right on uh, Sheila Ave and at the corner of Sheila Ave there's a McDonald's you know you got to turn right at the McDonald's and that's what you want to determine in the process of doing your route planning and uh, so consult at least two minimums uh, two sources at minimum before you go out and do your trip okay so you want to consult Google Maps you want to consult your phone the GPS unit that you have in your vehicle determine the best route uh, if you're going on a longer trip, you want to determine breaks at least every two hours. And if you're traveling with children, you're going to have to plan uh, meal stops and you're going to have to plan uh, rest areas that have play areas, parks and schools and those types of things so the kids can get out and run around. And, you know, because like us, their, their bums get sore sitting in the car and you get antsy and those types of things. Uh, and uh, one of the other things you can do with children on longer trips is you can go to the library and get some of those audio books. Uh, and it comes with the book and the audio and you can tell the story in the car. Okay, fuel stops and you're gonna need to determine that as well and write out the directions in your own short form. Don't just send the Google directions to your phone. That's not gonna help you out. If you actually sit down and write out the directions in your own handwriting, it's going to put it into your brain so you can have some idea of where you're going in your brain. So make sure you write it out as well, especially if you've never been there before. That's gonna make it a lot easier for you. All right, so landmarks, as I said, with Google Maps and Street View, uh, at what street are you turning? So you can determine which street you're gonna be turning at and then what is the street before? So uh, for example, if you're turning at Smith Street, you know that the street before that is gonna be 24th Street. So you come up, you see 24th Street and you know at the next block you're gonna be turning right or left depending on uh, you know which directions you're going. And as well, have a look at this map, this video here. It's a longer video, but it goes into explicit detail of how to do navigation and route planning. And I actually do it in the vehicle and show you how to navigate and route plan. I also show you, give you much more uh, detail about uh, Google Maps, and I go over that and show you how to plan a route. And Corey will put that video up for you as well. So what are your landmarks and are you on a multi-lane street? Because if you're on a multi-lane street, you're gonna have to get the right lane into the right lane before you get to the intersection. And you wanna try and get into the right lane as quickly as, uh, as soon as possible. So if you're three or four blocks away from the intersection where you're going to turn, you're gonna be turning left, just drive in the left-hand lane. Yes, it's gonna be annoying to other vehicles and those types of things, but you don't want, to, because you don't know where you're going, you don't wanna just sort of all of a sudden end up on the intersection and then you, know, you gotta abort the turn because you didn't get into the right lane. And this is the other point that I would like to make in terms of safety. If you are right on the intersection and you're making a left-hand turn, for example, and you're not in the left-hand lane, don't force your way over. That's dangerous and can, uh, is an unpredictable action and could put you at risk of being involved in a collision. Go through the, the intersection, abort the turn, make the next left, and then come back around. So make a left, a left, and then come back around and make a right, and then you're gonna be okay. Uh, to carry on in your way, okay? All right, phone or GPS unit, put it on audio, put it in your vehicle. If you have to look at your phone or your GPS unit while you're driving, simply stop the vehicle, look at it, get your bearings where you're going, and do not trust the directions of the G GPS, especially if you're driving a larger unit. If you're driving a recreational vehicle, if you're pulling a trailer, if you're driving a bus, you're driving a truck, do not trust the directions of that. Uh, some couple years ago when I went back driving truck for a very short period of time there was a GPS unit in the truck but the GPS unit went out and then I ended up using my phone. Your phone is not uh, programmed to deal with low bridges and overpasses and no truck routes, no bus routes. So do not trust the, the directions of your GPS unit. It's probably on the next slide here. Sorry. Ah, screwed up here. Bouncing all over the place here. My apologies. There we go, yes, so use your eyes, right? <laughs> it's like the movie Serenity with Malcolm Reynolds, one of my favorite movies of all times. So he says, if you wanna find somebody, use your eyes. And it's the same thing with navigation and route planning. Use your eyes. 
look at road signs, okay? Especially when you're in an area where you don't know where you're going, especially when you're in an area where you're trying to find a destination that you haven't been to before, look at the road signs. These are your best friends that will give you information. And if you're driving a larger vehicle, you do not want to encounter a, a, a railway trestle like this or a bridge or an overpass that says 13 feet 6 inches. It's not likely you're going to get under it because the maximum height for commercial vehicles, recreational vehicles, uh, you know, RV units and those types of things, 13 feet 6 inches in the United States, 4.15 meters here in Canada. So know that, okay? And as I said, get in the correct lane well in advance of the intersection where you're going to turn and look for overhead signs and obstructions. And the other thing about this, Corey, I'll put this video up for you. It's one of my older videos. I tried to watch it last night, but <laughs> I had not yet developed my camera presence and I was a little stiff, but the information is there in that video, okay? Buildings and trees. For those of you driving larger vehicles in unknown areas, stay away from buildings and trees. They like to take bites out of larger vehicles. Never trust an overhead sign. And we can, in the question and answer period, we can talk a little bit about the state of New York because the state of New York, you know, in terms of driving tends to be a little bit different. So we'll, we'll talk about them and address those kinds of questions as well. Read the road signs when you're traveling to an unknown destination. I cannot stress that enough. All right, navigation. If you're the least bit unsure, if the two sources that you use, Google Maps or whatever other map program you use, or your phone or your GPS unit, if you're unsure of something, call the destination and get directions. And if you're a commercial driver, a CDL driver, and you're calling a business and you're getting into a business, make sure that you talk to the shipper. <laughs> I learned the hard way that talking to the reception, uh, I swear that some of these people who work in the office in terms of giving directions to somebody who's driving a larger vehicle, they pop up out of the ground in the morning. I, I, I sure they did. So they don't give you directions, okay? So talk to the shipper, get directions, and then have that confirmed by your maps or your phone, and that way you're gonna get in there because I can tell you right now from personal experience, for those of you driving transit buses, those of you driving coaches, highway buses, uh, and trucks and trailers, that you can't just turn these things around in somebody's driveway, okay? So it's better to do a bit of work up front and then you're not gonna get lost. It's gonna be a lot easier for you. If you are driving slow along a roadway and you're looking for the address, you're looking for the building, Put your four-way flashers on to indicate to traffic behind you that you are driving slowly, that you're, you know, you may stop abruptly and those types of things, and then they're gonna, uh, uh, you know, they're gonna know that you're looking for an address. Okay. If you have somebody with you, get them to help you out. Okay. Passengers on a bus, you know, get them to help you out and those types of things. And if, you, and as I said, if you're unsure, stop. And for those of you driving large buses, those of you large, larger vehicles, don't just drive into a, a parking lot around a building or something because you might get jammed up in there. It's better to stop on the street and then walk in and have a look around and then drive in, all right? And here is the golden rule of navigation. You don't get lost when you don't know where you're going. You get lost when you think you know where you're going. <laughs> I can tell you a story about that. I got down into New York one night and I said to another guy, oh, I know how to get out of here. We go and I went across the road and then sure enough, I ended up right in Soho with a tractor trailer unit. There's two of us in there. We got jammed up in there <laughs> because there were cars parked on both sides of the road right up to the corner at the T intersection uh, and we couldn't get around on the left-hand turn. It was just jammed up and then we were sitting there, I don't know, for about 30, 35 minutes trying to figure out what we were gonna do and how we were gonna get out of there and finally the police showed up <laughs> <laughs> moved a few cars around and we got backed up and got out but you know it was a waste of an hour and a half and it was uh, really embarrassing on my part because I thought I knew where I was going and I didn't okay so as I said when you're calling for directions talk to the shipper do not talk to the receptionist sometimes the receptionist will have the directions written out but that's unlikely in this day and age with GPS and phones and Google Maps and those types of things okay uh, and have a pen and paper ready to write down the direction so you can take it back to your vehicle and you can confirm that with Google Maps or you can confirm that with your GPS unit or whatnot all right so good luck in your road test we'll answer any questions you have about this I'll tell you a few more stories about route planning and navigation because I drove truck and buses in the time before GPS units before iPhones <laughs> And I've been lost a couple of times, so I can tell you stories about that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right, so we'll transition back over here. There we go.
and back and we'll answer any questions you have here all right so Corey's put up the videos for you there excellent and AP had a question there all right uh, and Corey's put up the link for the air brake book over at the smart drive test website Michael love your videos thank you so much Michael that's awesome if you have any questions at all we can help you out with that and bear with me just one sec here I'm just gonna make one slight adjustment I think I got it up too high and just turn that down a little bit there we go okay uh, a video about police stops for new drivers would be very valuable okay I mean police rules and regulations for roadside stops by police because a lot of new drivers not exactly know the rules okay so when uh, manager you're talking about Police stops, you're talking about for drinking and driving, those kinds of roadside stops. Is that what you're talking about? Just clarify that for me. Jonathan, hello from New York City. Sorry I wasn't in your past few streams. Time and overtime as a school bus driver is money. Anyone have any questions for their road tests and driving? Please feel free to ask. Excellent. Thank you, Jonathan. Welcome back to the live streams. And happy to hear you're getting some extra work there with your bus and that sort of thing. Mercy, been looking for a video of how to drive an automatic car, but I've not seen uh, do you have any, sir, that would help a lot? Uh, Mercy, I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one yet, but I can get one for you. And I'll tell you a funny story, Mercy, about driving an automatic vehicle. I'm old enough to remember uh, I was a kid when seatbelt laws came in in the 1970s, and I can remember my parents lamenting about this. And I can remember my dad actually disconnecting the sensor on the car for the seatbelt. You know, because you didn't hook up your seatbelt on the car, the, the seatbelt light would come on. And my dad actually unhooked that so the sensor wouldn't come on anymore. And then uh, people were telling me last week that on Amazon you can actually buy a piece that fits into the seatbelt thing that will turn the sensor off on your car. Well, so we're doing the video with the pilot last week. And of course, the pilot's a 2017. It's got all the bells and whistles, all the sensors and signals, and everything else you could ask for. And it's a push button transmission. So you push it to put it in park. So we're in the we're in the parking lot. I'm with the uh, the media manager from Bannister Honda, and we're working down at the parking lot. Well, I get in. I got all the cameras hooked up, and you know I'm trying to figure all this stuff out at the same time. And I push the button to put it in drive to go, and it goes forward, and it stops. And I look down again, and it's in park. And I'm like, well, that's weird. So I push push drive again. And the car goes ahead a little bit and it stops. And I look down again, it's in park. I'm like, what? And now, now I'm thinking, I'm, okay, I'm doing something wrong here. <laughs> and I finally look at the instrument panel and it says, fasten your seatbelt. Now, if you don't put your seatbelt on, it completely immobilizes the car. The car will not go unless you have your seatbelt on. So as soon as I put my seatbelt on, put it and drive away, the car went. <laughs> and of course, uh, Charlene, who's the media manager at Honda Bannister, is laughing because you know you got to put your foot on the brake to to have the car start, and you got to have your seatbelt on to make the car go. So I can imagine what my parents would have said in the times when seatbelts came out if the car had been completely immobilized because you weren't wearing your seatbelt. So that's one of the lessons about automatic transmissions. Now there you go. Uh, Okay, so yes, coming back to manager's question about driver education being mandatory. No, I I have to agree with Jonathan here. I don't think that driver education will ever be mandatory. I uh, don't know some of the rules in driving. Okay, uh, Michael, am I too old? I'm 55 years old from Chicago. Absolutely not, Michael. You are not too old to learn how to drive. You can always, always learn how to drive, and I encourage you to do that. And here at Smart Drive Test, we will do everything in our power to help you be successful and earn a license. Okay, and Corey's put up a video for that. Excellent. There we go, Jonathan. Thank you for that encouragement. That's brilliant. Okay, and I'm studying all your videos. Awesome. Hall phase, how do you look at your GPS when the freeway? <clears throat> okay, so hall phase, when you got your GPS unit, you got your smartphone, and you've got those doing your navigation there should be an audio function on it so that you're not looking at it because you should not be looking at it while you're driving. My phone has audio on it and it, is, it you know, Bartholomew is very annoying. That's what I call my GPS voice. Uh, you know, in 500 meters, turn left at Smith Street and you get, you know, 
you get this, turn laugh now, turn laugh now. You're like, oh my God, Bartholomew, you just really annoying. So it should be on audio function, okay? And plan my destination, navigation will be helpful and I don't really, okay, so Jonathan, where'd you go? Um, yes, check your mirrors, check your blind spots, make sure you determine the lane you wish to turn. Excellent, okay. Uh, AP manager, so manager, what happened here in uh, British Columbia was when they brought the GLP in here, the graduated licensing program, it they, there was an incentive for new drivers to take the in classroom portion of that, and then and then they disbanded that, and the ben the bonus no was no longer there. The students didn't get a discount on their insurance and those types of things. So very few students now here in British Columbia actually take. Uh, in classroom training uh, most of the stuff that they get is online it's from the manuals it's for their learners test that's basically all the classroom theory that they get uh, most of it is practical and, and uh, uh, practical and in vehicle it's not uh, it's not there's no classroom time anymore okay it's even the same with um, with CDLs, there's very little classroom time. I mean, we have some courses here for tractor trailer units that's like 28 hours. And I mean, when you get 28 hours and you're doing pre-trip inspection, uh, backing, hook and unhook coupling, uh, you know, students only get about 13, 14 hours of actual seat time in the truck. So it's very, it's not very much at all. So no, there's not a lot of classroom time here in British Columbia uh, for students, regardless of what class of the license they're going for, whether it's a car, truck, or bus, or motorcycle. Okay, uh, Mercy, okay, uh, it's me. Also, if speed limit is 35, if I go over, will I fail? Okay, so excellent question about the road test in terms of speed management, and we'll just talk about that briefly. When the posted speed limit is 30 miles an hour and you go 35, yes, you're probably going to fail if it's miles per hour. Uh, it's me. Are you in Canada or are you in the United States? Are you working in miles or are you working in uh, kilometers per hour? 35 miles an hour is a lot over the speed limit. Uh, so what I would suggest to you is uh, Corey will put up the video for you on speed management Probably your tolerance in terms of how far you can go outside of the speed limit is probably two to three kilometers an hour, two to three miles an hour. And it comes back to how much time. So once you notice that the speedometer is over a little bit, you can only be out of that for maybe 30 seconds at the most. And you need to be correcting that. You need to get back to the posted speed limit. And that's one of the major components of a road test is speed management. You need to do the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. And there's not much tolerance there in how fast you need to be going. And this is the reason why you need to practice because you as a driver preparing for a road test have to drive the posted speed limit. Well then the rest of the traffic out there is doing the traffic flow, which can be anywhere from five to 10 kilometers an hour or five to eight miles an hour over the posted speed limit. So it's so you have to go contrary to what the rest of the traffic is out there doing and you have to do uh, the actual posted speed limit for the majority of your test. But now keep in mind, for the purposes of a road test, depending on where you are in the world, you only have to hold it together for a short period of time. You don't have to hold it together for a long period of time, okay? So that's that's the other great thing about it. Um, no, okay, again, it's me. Uh, you have to drive the posted speed limit. You don't wanna drive that slow. That is too slow. Unless conditions of the roadway will allow it, uh, uh, you you can't drive that slow. You're only allowed two or three kilometers, two or three miles per hour in terms of how fa how far off the posted speed limit you can be. Okay, Mercy, uh, keep up the good work, sir. When should I be expecting to get the video, sir? You are doing a terrific job. Uh, excellent. I'll try and get that up as soon as I can, Mercy. Uh, hopefully within the, next, the week, 10 days for you. I'll get that up as soon as possible. Uh, what is it, Mercy, that you're having difficulty with in terms of an automatic transmission? Because I know there's there's a few things that are interesting, and I know uh, when the the salesperson at Honda Bannister was kind of going over the transmission, these new automatic transmissions are <laughs> they're a little bit different. So you 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 push drive once, and it r runs in standard mode. You push drive again, it goes into uh, sport mode and you push drive a third time and there are actually paddles to shift it manually on the back of the steering wheel which <laughs> you know that's a lot to remember even for somebody like me who's experienced so okay uh, 
Hall phase, what's less expensive and harder driving, a bit bus or a big rig? Okay, so hall phase, you can get your bus license less, it, it costs less than it does to, to get a big rig license. And it's, it's a bit easier because essentially a bus is just a big car. And so it's going to be a bit easier for you. Uh, getting a tractor trailer license is going to give you better return on your investment because you don't have to work your way up, but uh, you have more options in terms of uh, where you're going to get a job and what kind of work you can get in those types of things. All right. Okay. Uh, manager, Ontario is introducing online classrooms soon, but manager, hasn't Ontario had uh, in classroom driver training for a long time now that they've had an incentive that, that if you do the in classroom, because uh, I know when I was there and it was some time ago, it was the late 1990s when I got my license in Ontario, that they had in classroom theory that students took and if they took that uh, that they could reduce the amount of time that they were on their learner's license uh, is that it obviously I'm from what I'm gathering from your comment here that uh, it's not the same as it used to be okay uh, da -da -da -da. Digna I'm struggling changing lanes any advice uh, you should drive three kilometers under the speed limit no not for the purposes of a road test hall phase you want to try and be as close as you can to the speed limit uh, for the purposes of driving uh, on a road test and being successful on your speed management. Uh, Digna struggled changing lanes. Okay, excellent. So Digna, if you're having trouble changing lanes, the first thing that I would uh, encourage you to do is go to the parking lot, get some of those one meter tall, three, 36 inch tall pylons and work with those doing the exercises in the learn to drive video. And Corey will put that up for you. Do the forward figure eights, do the reverse figure eights, and that will help you out in terms of learning where your vehicle is in space and place. All right, and by learning where your vehicle is in space and place, it's gonna be easier for you to change lanes because it's part of the problem with changing lanes is, is that you're moving into one of the lateral blind areas on your vehicle. It's not very big because it's the driver's side. If you're moving to the right, that's your biggest one of your, your second biggest blind spot is on your passenger side of your vehicle which is almost 25 feet from where you are so that's much more difficult but if you're moving to the right it's a little bit easier because your blind area isn't as big but you got a shoulder check make sure you check your gap check your mirror if the vehicle that you're merging in front of is in the upper one third of the mirror then you're probably okay to merge over and it's going to vary a little bit depending on what kind of vehicle you're driving but Shoulder mirror signal shoulder check at least minimum three flashes on the signal and then move over and Corey will put the video up for you on how to change lanes and that will give you a lot more information about how to change lanes in town and on the highway and look at that video but again minimum three flashes mirror signal shoulder check and then shoulder check again immediately before you move over and as you're changing lanes on a diagonal you have to speed up you have to accelerate slightly because you're covering more distance and to maintain the speed you need to speed up slightly to, to compensate for that increased distance as you're moving diagonally and then lastly leave your signal on completely until you get in the other lane so those are some basic techniques for changing lanes okay rush girl thank you so much for your super chat there that's awesome and for all the other smart drivers on the channel uh, the super chat is always always appreciated and again I come back to uh, suggesting videos for me because it, it the videos that you suggest for me to do and I get them up for you they always do really well and help a lot of people out so I appreciate that again as well and thank you again Rush Girl for that uh, super chat uh, Jennifer what consider making videos for drivers using uh, handicap controls yes Jennifer that is something else that is on my list and I need to find somebody uh, who uh, has a vehicle with hand, with hand controls that I can do some videos for you. And one of my smart drivers in Ontario, and I'm going to Ontario this summer, and maybe we can get together. And, and now you just reminded me, Jennifer, I want to thank you for that. I'll get in touch with him, and maybe we can go down and do some videos with him because I know he was working with hand controls, and he was working with the people at Parkwood Hospital there in London, Ontario, and they do uh, hand control uh, driver training. And that was where I worked uh, some years ago. And, and maybe we can go and do an interview with them and we can use their vehicles. So awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer, because I'm planning a trip in August and uh, I can get in touch with them and we can do some videos and put that information up and help people out there. So thank you for that. Um, 
Okay, hall phase. How often can big rig students practice driving rigs? So what's going to happen, hall phase? It's going to depend. Uh, you're in Ontario there, and uh, maybe more uh, manager there can give me a little bit more information. But I know they changed the curriculum in Ontario in terms of a mandatory curriculum for class A tractor trailer drivers. So you would probably get more inf better information hall phase uh, from dr calling a local driving school there and uh, asking them because I'm not up on what they changed the curriculum for. So there was a lot of changes in terms of uh, commercial driver training as a result of the uh, bus crash that happened two years ago here uh, in Saskatchewan. Okay, the Broncos bus crash. All right, Corey's put the video up on how to change lanes. Manager, yes, they do now, but they are trying to eliminate 20 hours of classroom time and make it online. Okay, so they're moving to online driver training. All right, so maybe they need to talk to me. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of online driver training. Okay, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see how that transition goes, manager, with, with moving the driver training online. Okay, uh, Jonathan, uh, have a yellow light before the line. Slow down as it will turn into a red light for the road test. Anticipate the traffic lights. When they change, don't speed up to pass a yellow, especially on a road test. If you speed up uh, to go through a yellow light on a road test, you won't be successful. Okay? Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where'd everybody go? All right. Last hall phase. You can't learn much from classroom time unless you're doing or you're going for a uh, car. Uh, yeah, there, there is a lot of information that you can learn in the classroom, but it needs to be balanced with uh, it needs to be balanced with working in the vehicle as well and applying that information. Otherwise, as you said, it's it's difficult to, to make that applicable. Andreas, uh, Class B. Okay, uh, my game. Uh, I start my driving on Saturday. I need help on backing up the car. Okay, there's lots of uh, good... There's, there's a whole playlist here that Corey will put up for you on reversing the vehicle. The first thing that I would do is just go into a parking lot where you got, have lots of room and start just backing up the vehicle, okay? And for the purposes of a road test, hand on the steering wheel, seat belt on, and then put your hand behind the passenger seat and that will get you backing up. Uh, so start doing that, then work with the pylons, do reverse figure eights, and then find a, a back laneway or some other place that you can go and do reversing. Uh, if you can get good at reversing, and quiz master then that will improve your overall driving and as well it will help you with the slow speed maneuvers that you have to do for the purposes of the road test and again I've had a few people in the last short time say to me that oh we don't have to do parallel parking you know my state has eliminated parallel parking it seems to be some people misinformed in the United States it doesn't matter where you are in the world where you're taking a road test I can almost guarantee you that there are three maneuvers you're going to be required to do on a road test and that is reverse stall parking parallel parking and three-point turn they're going to make you do those at minimum there are other slow speed maneuvers parking along a curb two-point reverse turn uh, in California they make you reverse along a curb for a long period of time probably 100 200 feet and there's a video on here for that as well and Corey will put that up for you that you need to do so know that all right, so Mercy, uh, we just got an automatic car and my tutor is doing a terrible job. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Uh, I just want to learn with your videos, with the support of my husband. That's why I need your videos because I trust you more. <laughs> well, thank you for that lovely comment. I'm sorry that your driving instructor isn't uh, helping as much as he could, he or she could. Uh, it's me. I have my road test tomorrow at 1030. Pray for me. Uh, you're going to do awesome. It's me. Just breathe. Know that you only have to keep it together for a very short time and do what you need to do you know focus and imagine yourself passing get a good night's sleep and it's me are you taking a driving school car or are you taking your own vehicle for your road test okay um i have to do parallel parking and reversing yes for the purpose of your road pass road test you do okay charnel uh parallel parking and reversing um um uh, Thanks for what you were doing. I watch all the time. Inquisitor, Inquisitor Master, you are most welcome. Thank you for the compliment. Hall phase, can you do a video on a mock road test with a big rig? Yes, I can, and I'm going to be doing that hall phase. Uh, <laughs> we might have to break that up a little bit because most tractor trailer road tests run into the two, two and a half hour mark, depending on what you're doing. I could probably do it uh, half an hour, hook on hook, another half hour, uh, backing 
road test. I could probably do it in an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes, but most road tests are pretty big. So, uh, it's me. I might be the oldest turning 40 in July. No, uh, you probably not, not the oldest, but you're, you're doing awesome and you definitely inspire the rest of us. Uh, Michael, you are doing a great job. Thank you so much. Uh, you're going to ace your test. Excellent. Okay. So it's me. You're boring your sister's car. Excellent. It's me. Do a pre-trip inspection on your sister's vehicle today, okay? And Corey will put the video up for you on what you need to look for for the uh, pre-trip inspection. And if get a hold of your sister's car, wash the car, and clean it out. Give it a vacuum, okay? Because you don't want you know fast food wrappers in the foot wells. You don't want them up to your knees and those types of things. And make sure that the seat belt is working on the passenger seat as well. Check all your lights and those types of things because you might have something minor that's wrong with the car. For example, you have a light out, right? You have a parking light. If you have a parking light out, they're gonna deny you the road test. They're gonna do a little mini pre-trip before your road test, so know that and do that tonight, okay? And then you know that you're not gonna be denied your road test because there's something wrong with your car, something minor that could be fixed. And unfortunately, if you're driving a Malibu, and I'll tell you a funny story about, I did a video here a couple of months ago on changing a headlight on the Honda. Well, they're easy on the Honda. You can change the headlights in 10 minutes. And I showed it to a friend of mine. He says, oh, that's just a video on how to change headlights on a 1998 Honda CRV." He says, that's not gonna be very popular. And so I went on the internet and I started looking at some of the, how to change headlights on some different, on the top 10 cars. One of them was the Chevy Malibu. Well, the Chevy Malibu is 45 minutes to change the headlights by a qualified uh, uh automotive technician. I was trying to think of the right word because you can't call them mechanics anymore. They're automotive technicians. You have to take most of the front end apart to change the headlight on a Malibu. So know that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so do a pre-trip inspection. Be ready for road tests and don't de be denied on that. Okay. Uh, Lolita, uh, do you have any suggestions on nervous first time drivers? Yes, I do. There's a video here and Corey will put it up for you, Lolita, on fear and anxiety in driving and the other thing that I suggest to you Lolita is go and get some of those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and work in a parking lot with those and get comfortable with the car before you go out on the roadway as well look at the video uh, on how to drive a larger SUV do the 2 by 4 exercise work with the pylons that way you know where your vehicle is in space and place and you learn mastery of the primary controls the steering wheel the brake and the throttle once you know where the vehicle is in space and place, you know how all the primary controls work, you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable when you get on the roadway because you're not dealing with those very basic skills that you need to be able to drive the vehicle, okay? If you just start driving out on the roadway, it's very intimidating because you're in a crowd, right? <laughs> so know that, it's, it's a little bit like acting, right? We always rehearse before we go on stage in front of an audience. And it's the same thing with learning to drive a car. You wanna rehearse a little bit in the parking lot, getting used to the primary controls, getting used to where the vehicle is in space and place relation to, in relation to fixed objects, pylons, AKA pylons, because if you hit a pylon, it's not a big deal, right? Whereas if you hit a fixed object on the roadway or another road user, then that's a big deal. <laughs> so uh, yeah, practice in the parking lot, that'll give you the confidence to go out onto the roadway. Uh, Jennifer. Uh, you sent me some pictures. Okay, I didn't get the pictures. I'm sorry, Jennifer. I, you, I try to answer my emails. Uh, send them to me again and because they might have got lost somewhere, but I'll, I'll have another look for those, okay? All right. Epic. Uh, for route planning, if you're using a regular car or an electric vehicle, try using WAS because it detects the traffic spots where your route goes. For large vehicles, is there uh, an app? Yes, uh, Epic. I know there is... Um, GPS navigation for commercial vehicles and uh, some of the smart drivers here who are driving CDL vehicles might be able to do that. Okay, Michael, I'm using my nephew's car. Excellent. Michael, again, do the pre-trip inspection for your vehicle. And I just want to go back to, okay, practice. Yes, lots of practice. Excellent. It's me. You're going to do a pre-trip inspection later. Okay, now I'm confident it takes practice and experience to become a good driver. And yes, it does. And there's the video on fear and anxiety. All right. And <laughs> uh, so we go back to what inspired the route planning and navigation video here. When I drove bus for Greyhound, 
uh, I was with a trainer for a week. I think I was about a week. It was about seven days I was with a trainer. So I had somebody else that was showing me where to go, uh, how to drive the bus. And I, I can distinctly remember going to Parks in New South, South Wales. So one of the bus routes that we did was the Melbourne to Brisbane run. And so the Melbourne driver would take the bus to Parks, New South Wales, which is in the outback of New South Wales, drop the bus off. The Brisbane driver who had stayed overnight would take the bus back all the way to Brisbane. And then the next morning, the Brisbane driver would come back to Parks and then the Melbourne driver would get on and go back to Melbourne. So I went with the trainer there. I think I went with the trainer. Yes, I went with the trainer to Canberra, which is the federal capital there in Australia. But I didn't go into Sydney on the milk run. And the milk run, when I was driving coaches for Greyhound, went through Liverpool, which is an outer suburb of Sydney, and then we went to uh, Parramatta, and then we went into the downtown area in Sydney to drop people off on the Greyhound coach. I had never done the milk run, and I ended up doing the milk run by myself, and I had never been there. And for those of you who have been to Sydney, Australia, those of you who have driven in Sydney, Australia, uh, it is the definition of urban sprawl. <laughs> Australians take urban sprawl to a whole new level and it's probably 60 65 kilometers from the outer suburbs of Sydney Australia into the center of Sydney and it's not like driving in the United States of America where they have a very systematic uh, interstate system and they have ring roads around the large metropolitan cities and you and they have spur roads that go into the cities and those types of things it is you know one urban street to another urban street out onto a bit of a freeway <laughs> it's just one thing one thing and another so I can remember and of course as I said this is in the days before Google Maps this is in the days before uh, you know GPS this is in the days before smartphones and those types of things so I had all the directions all written out I had it meticulously written out where I had turned what streets how far this and that and I got on the bus and I said to the passenger sitting in the front I said here's the directions and I had it all systematically written out and they could read it to me and I said you're gonna help me get into <laughs> Sydney and we did and you know they helped they read out the directions and it was very helpful I had a couple people actually on the bus who came up who were from Sydney Australia and could give me some guidance about where I was going and where the bus station was and those types of things so in terms of route planning and navigation if you get if you have somebody else there that can help you out recruit them get them to help you out. <laughs> don't be embarrassed to ask and if you do get lost along the way stop somewhere stop at a gas station stop at a restaurant stop somewhere and ask people where stuff is because you can get turned around and you can get lost all right so do that okay Ah, excellent. Brent, road test tomorrow in Williams Lake. Awesome. And good luck on that. And be sure to tune back in and let us know where uh, you're going to be taking your road test. And excellent. And Jonathan has put up the documentation that you need. Uh, documentation to the road test. Two forms of photo government ID. Excellent. Uh, learner's permit. Yes, don't forget your learner's permit once you go down there. And make sure the car has valid insurance and registration. Yes, all of that is excellent. Thank you so much for that, Jonathan. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Okay, it's me, so I'm using my sister's car for the test. I need only the car insurance right and the registration as well. Lolita, I gotta learn the brake from the gas first. I feel bad. No, Lolita, if you know that and you, you're working in the parking lot, that's really good. And as well, Corey will put up the video for you on speed control and that will show you how to work the throttle and how to get very comfortable with the throttle uh, for the purpose, purposes of being uh, prepared for driving out on the roadway. Uh, manager, Rick, can you please make a video for the importance of driving school vehicles to use on a road test since it's safer for everybody compared to a private car? Uh, okay, uh, manager, why do you think that uh, driving school cars are safer than your own personal vehicle? Just, I wanna, I wanna hear that first. Okay, uh, how you turn a car while the car is moving right away? Okay, um, Un, you have to get the vehicle down to the speed before you execute the turn. So for example, if you're making a right-hand turn, uh, if you're turning, if you're driving a car in kilometers, you want to be sort of 8 to 12 kilometers an hour, or no, not 8 to 12, 10 to 15 kilometers an hour, and, or 8 to 12 miles an hour before you make the right-hand turn. So it's important before you make a turn 
that you have the vehicle reduced in speed so you can make that turn without having to brake. So you want to do your braking before the turn uh, while the vehicle is in a straight line, okay? ADCO, there we go. Okay, ADCO, again, thank you so much for the super chat. I saw that at the beginning. It was a very nice start to the live stream and the fact that I was having technical difficulty because uh, we couldn't hook up to the YouTube server, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, ADCO is answering the question for CDL GPS, which is Smart Truck Route, and that's what you're looking for for those of you CDL drivers who are driving uh, commercial vehicles and looking for GPS uh uh, mapping information that will give you low overheads and as well uh, correct me if I'm wrong uh, add code but it also will tell you the location of scales DOT scales and those types of things okay uh, epic uh, regarding large vehicles when planning a route do you need a planning software that tells you where buses and trucks are prohibited also the radio can help for knowing heavy traffic areas uh, yes, Epic. Uh, the software will tell you that, the no truck routes, but I will also tell you uh, some places the no truck routes are, are well, you know, they're there and they're very visible. In other places, <laughs> yeah, it's not until you actually turn the corner that the no truck route sign is actually placed there. And I've, been, I've had places like that where I've got around the corner and there's, there's the no truck sign and now you've got to get off that goofy uh, street and get back onto one of the main roads. All right, hall phase. When you ride your motorbike and your bike starts to wiggle left and right, what do you do to stop the wiggling? Okay, hall phase. What you're talking about is you're, you're talking about front wheel and rear wheel wobbles on a motorcycle. And if you've got that going on, you've got something wrong with the, bicycle, with the motorcycle. There's either one of the tires is out of balance, the tires on the vehicle are old. It depends on you know that and I know that my mate here who is in the video that I just did last week uh, he was having vibration in the bike and it was because the tires were old and they weren't balanced properly uh, the other thing is is that you could have uh, you could the frame could be bent and if the frame is bent or the vehicle is out of alignment I think you could take it into a shop and you could get them to check all of that to make sure that the bike is mechanically sound now saying that and this is going to depend on the motorcycle that you have and how much horsepower you have. If you have a front wheel wobble, so that means that the handlebars on the front of the bike, when you get up to a certain speed, start going like this, and it goes out of control because potentially you could lose control in a front wheel wobble, you need to accelerate to get that front wheel up off the road. If it's a rear wheel wobble, then you need to slow the bike down to lift the weight up off that back tire and get it uh, straightened out so those that's what you're talking about in terms of front wheel wobbles and rear wheel wobbles but a lot of times it's a technical uh, and there's something wrong with the motorcycle and you need to take it into a shop and get it fixed okay uh, okay so that's that hall phase you reached 100,000 uh, see the silver reward plaque on the top right there you go okay ADCO did you talk about New York uh, City and tips for navigating narrow roads and heavy traffic and yes there we go ADCO excellent thanks for reminding me for that okay so New York State tends to be a little bit different in terms of the rest of the United States of America and one of the examples of that is mile markers and exit numbers in the United in New York State do not line up okay most of the other states the interstates mile markers and exit numbers are one in the same and excellent point here on mile markers that I didn't make when I, in the presentation. Mile markers, use mile markers when you're navigating on interstates, freeways, and motorways. It's going to make it a lot easier for you because you know that if you're getting off at exit 285 and you're at mile marker 275, you've got 10 miles to go and you need to get off the interstate. So that's really gonna help you out. All right, uh, mile markers, New York State. The other thing about New York State in terms of overhead obstructions is, is that they don't measure from the roadway, they measure from the center of the hub. So if you have a bridge or overpass that says 12 foot six, in most cases, you can go under that with a larger vehicle. And I've, I've had experiences, uh, especially delivering in New York State, uh, in the early morning and there's a bridge that says 12 foot eight and I stop the truck and then of course the traffic's piling up behind me and I'm like, I can't go under there and then some, really lovely person gets off their motorcycle walks up beside the truck and goes you can go under there <laughs> so that's some experience of new york state that it's different as well of course you've got heavy traffic and new york uh, the new york uh, long island 
expressway is referred to as the Long Island parking lot. So no, you're going to need to take your time and those types of things. And you don't want to get lost uh, in traffic. And here's another uh, experience of getting lost. Long Island City. Uh, I'm going to, I've been running New York City for five or six months at this point, and I'm going to New York City and I'm going to Long Island City. And so you come up the Brooklyn Queens Expressway and then you turn east out on the Long Island, Long Island Expressway. And of course, I'm thinking Long Island City's on Long Island. <laughs> well, I got out about mile marker 45, so about 45 miles out on Long Island. And this Long Island City isn't anywhere out there. And I get on the radio and I'm like, where does anybody know where Long Island City is? And they're like, they start laughing and they're like, yeah, it's back on mile marker two, which is west of the Brooklyn Queens Expressway and Long Island City is not on Long Island it's in Queens so never assume that you know where something is and this comes back to the statement that I was saying before in the PowerPoint presentation you don't get lost when you know where you think you know where you're going or sorry you get you don't get lost when you don't know where you're going you get lost when you think you knew where you're going and I thought I knew where I was going in terms of Long Island City it's actually in Queens so know that if you ever go to New York City okay okay uh, Manager, driving school vehicles are safer because of the dual brake and roof sign makes everybody aware that somebody is learning and the examiner comfortable to use the brake for an emergency situation. I don't entirely agree with that, manager, and I'll tell you why I don't entirely agree with that. Because if you're in the car uh, and you don't have a dual brake, you can simply touch the steering wheel and you can move the steering wheel or you can just pop the transmission into neutral. So that... I personally, uh, I've only think I had three occasions that I've had to use the brake in all the time that I've been uh, doing driving instruction. Uh, the other thing about driving school signs, <laughs> people tend to ignore them a lot. So I don't know whether the signs make you safer or make you a target. Uh, I mean, we can open that to debate. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'll get I'll give that some thought. Okay, manager. Uh, hall phase, I meant 100,000 campaign. Uh, okay, pass the road test. Uh, hall phase, it's still going really slow. We did have Valeria from Toronto who won the April draw, and then very soon here, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to do the May draw and get that out for people as well. Okay, Sherry, I absolutely love you. Thank you so much for that. Okay, I'm just going to go through quickly and get make sure actually, okay, great info. Thank you, Adco. Excellent. Sherry, are you married? <laughs> no, single dad. There we go. Excellent. Uh, anyone know when driving a truck is better to use a GPS phone or navigation? Andreas, uh, best to use a GPS unit uh, that is for commercial uh, drivers and just scroll back up through here uh, Adco put it up what it was okay Sherry uh, love it I'm from New York excellent uh, does the radio on the bus work no matter where you are no it doesn't uh, when I was talking about the radio hall phase I was talking about the CB radio and those tend to have a limited range okay uh, Sherry you're in Brooklyn awesome so you know what <laughs> you know what I was talking about in terms of the Brooklyn Queens Expressway and knowing that Long Island City is actually in Queens Excellent. Love Brooklyn. Uh, I was there quite a number of times uh, trying to drive truck there and navigating. And just one last story before we wrap up here. Uh, I'm just going to go a little bit longer here because I was a little bit late getting started. But I got lost in Sydney, Australia. And this goes back again to I thought I knew where I was going. And I don't know what happened, whether I was tired or whatnot. But I drive out of the terminal and I go down. And instead of turning right, I went left. And I'm like, what am I doing? You know, don't confuse me with the facts. I have my mind made up. I made a left and I thought, well, I'll just go around the block and come back. But I was too embarrassed to drive past the terminal again <laughs> with with bus passengers. And so anyway, I ended up, got completely lost down in Sydney, Australia. What's, down, what's called the Rocks, which is the suburb down underneath. You've probably seen the Sydney Harbor Bridge uh, in photographs and postcards. And the rocks is the suburbs underneath the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Well, I got lost down there, and finally I had to, I gave up and you know swallowed my pride. And I and I get on the microphone. And I said to the passengers, I said, "Does anybody here know how to get across? How to get to the Commonwealth Bridge? Because the Commonwealth Bri Bridge was the bridge in Sydney, Australia that I needed to get onto to get out and start doing the milk run." <laughs> so this passenger comes up and he's very nice and he starts giving me directions. And and I realized very quickly within a couple of minutes that this person didn't know where they were going. So. <laughs> got back on the microphone and I and I said does anybody else on the bus know how to get to the Commonwealth Bridge 
in Sydney, Australia. And so finally, somehow we figured it out. And we got back to the Commonwealth Bridge. But again, I was about 45 minutes late because I was too proud to drive back and around past the, the, the uh, Greyhound Terminal. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had a few times getting lost and it's very embarrassing when you have a bus load of passengers and you get and you get lost. So my friend there from Milwaukee who's taking his transit bus license, I, I understand uh, your trepidation and anxiety about uh, not knowing the routes. Okay, and Quiz Master, hi, uh, please tell me what I am supposed to do when we have one car. How do I get car insurance when my husband has already has insurance on the car? He doesn't want me on the insurance. Please help. Uh, uh, I don't know whether you're going to be able to get your own insurance, but usually they add you to the car insurance. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Uh, probably the best thing to do in Quizmaster is call the insurance company, tell them what you're working on, and ask them that question, and they'll be able to help you out. Okay? Jonathan, on Friday I was lost on one of my mid routes because the directions from my shift showed a street that I was supposed to turn didn't intersect with the road I was on. Fortunately, the kids helped out. Yes, and that's the great thing about driving buses. You've got passengers on the bus who can help you out when you get lost or don't know where you're going <laughs> or can help you navigate. It's awesome. Okay, uh, what happens if you're late to your destination on the bus? It happens. Uh, if you're late and you know you're going to be late, you call dispatch, you call whoever you need to call who's in charge of you, and you say, listen, I'm late. I'll be here at such and such a time. Okay? Paulette, uh, will you please do a video on how to use a GPS when traveling out of my hometown? I'm a new driver. Yes, Paulette, have a look at the video on navigation and route planning, and I go through that with my phone and show you how to do the GPS, and that'll help you out. All right? So, if you've had a road test in the last couple of weeks and you've been successful, congratulations on that. Be sure to head over to the Smart Drive Test website and sign up for the 100K campaign. Corey will put that up for you. And if you have a road test coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, good luck on that, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.